So I recently picked up this um, flat panel antenna off eBay. Came from uh, China, and I think it costs about seven pounds free shipping. But uh, I've got it plugged into the uh, Alpha card here, and my test router that I'm uh, scanning for at the moment, it's not far away at all. It's just um, in the next room, um, up in the kitchen on a floor above where I am now, and uh, it keeps uh, jumping around from around 40 dropping right down to about 18 it uh, really is a poor signal so I thought what we'll do is crack this open see what's inside and see what's gone wrong and see if uh, we can do something to uh, fix it and just to show you what a poor signal it is I've actually just got a screw here and I'm going to unplug it from the alpha card I'm going to stick this screw on the end of the alpha card and hopefully we'll get a better signal. So yeah, it is uh, using just a screw stuck in the end of the alpha card and getting much better signal than uh, that cheap Chinese antenna. So let's crack it open and let's see what's on the inside. So just having a quick look around the unit, you've got your coax cable here and uh, connected to an SMA connector so you can use things like the Alpha card but uh, it's really really thin coax it's not thick at all and I'll be really surprised if this is actually microwave rated but the antenna itself I like the actual form factor it's uh, it's not bad it's not bad you can move it around and it's quite solid on its base and uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad, it just doesn't work. So, looks like there's no screws holding it together, so uh, I've got some pry tools. I'm going to try and pry this apart so we can get inside and have a look. I don't want to break it because I can probably use this case for one of my own antennas. Maybe even find out what's going wrong with this one and uh, fix it. So it's just held on with these uh, little tabs. And there's the antenna. And it is actually a bi-quad. I didn't uh, expect that. I thought it was going to be something like a patch antenna, panel antenna, but uh, yeah it's a bi-quad. Got some leftover glue here and it looks pretty bent up. Hopefully picking that up on camera you can see how bent that is. Looks like it's just been thrown together. And you've got the shield here at the back and if you've seen one of my bi-quad builds before this shield needs to be uh, grounded and it looks like at first glance it's not actually connected to anything and taking in a little bit closer here because I think one of the major problems with this is you can see there's a big solder blob bridging the antenna in the middle there so just to double check that shield is not grounded and also, I just want to check the cable for continuity just to make sure that it is connected up because it really was poor. It's connected to the ground, it's connected to the middle connector as well. So it is uh, connected up here, but it is uh, bridged. I think uh, another problem with this antenna is you've got this um, flat spot here in the elements. And that looks to me to be about eight millimeters long, and that is seriously going to mess up the uh, measurements and mathematics of uh, this backward antenna. And uh, also looks a little bit big as well. It uh, it's given me about thirty-two and a half on the outside, but uh, on the inside measurement, which is the measurement you should always go by 
it's uh, 28.69 millimeters so 28 and a half millimeters say so uh, it's definitely uh, not tuned for the right frequency so let's solder this back on and we'll give it another test so uh, we can maybe give it a bit of uh, the benefit of the doubt so I've got it connected up at the moment to the alpha card and it's jumping up and down but uh, it's got a better signal than it did have so we've definitely helped things a little bit let's move it around see if we can get a slightly better signal and we can get it to the uh, mid 50s no problem but uh, it should be a lot more powerful than this by quad like I said the uh, test router is not far away at all so I'd expect it to be up in the 80s So I think what we're going to have to do is uh, rip the guts out of this and uh, put my own bi-quad antenna element in there. So I've got this reflector off and uh, ideally the reflector for a bi-quad wants to be one wavelength square. It's uh, not as um, important as say the dimensions of the driven element itself but uh, to get the best performance it wants to be one wavelength square. This is nowhere near one wavelength square. And I've also measured the actual case itself and uh, we haven't got enough space in here to do one wavelength but uh, it's going to be a lot better than this uh, little piece of aluminium that uh, wasn't connected to the ground anyway so I'm going to uh, line this with some uh, copper tape so we can actually solder onto that copper tape to uh, actually uh, connect our ground up. And the good thing about using this copper tape rather than a piece of tin is uh, these indentations that I've got a cut round I'll just put it over the top and just uh, mark them out with my thumb and it leaves the mark where I've actually got a cut out so it's a lot easier using this tape than uh, a piece of tin so I made the bi quad out of some scrap copper wire that I had laying around I uh, didn't show that bit because I've made quite a few videos now on how to build bi quads whether they're for a 2.4 gigahertz or the 5 gigahertz spectrum but uh, I've got the sides here at uh, 31.25 millimeters long so each is a quarter wavelength and hopefully it'll just sit nicely on uh, channel 6 in the middle of the spectrum on the uh, router so uh, I've got the original coax here I'm not going to change that yet I'm going to see how this works out first I've also this post here I've actually cut half of it away and I've also cut it down so it's exactly 15 millimeters from this back reflector now the uh, two pieces of copper wire here are also 15 millimeters long and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to solder those two feet to the copper foil this coaxial cable is actually going to come in underneath there and I'm going to solder that down onto the uh, copper foil as well and also the bottom of the feet on this element and this is actually going to come up and it's going to tuck behind there and solder in on that side of the element and then I'm going to hold it all in place with some hot glue so now that it's all soldered up I'm going to now put some hot glue on the top here just to hold it in place so uh, if you're vibrating or throwing it around it's not going to break away and also uh, put a load of hot glue down in here as well to uh, actually make that structure a little bit more solid and it's a good idea just to check continuity especially where you've got your overlapping pieces of foil making sure they're all connected and now that back reflector is now connected to the driven element of the bi quad so it should perform a lot better now so now that hot glue is dry it's uh, extremely stable it's not going to go anywhere and I've also added a little bit of hot glue here to the uh, coaxial cable just for a little bit of strain relief. So all that's left to do now is to put the uh, lid back on and give it a test and hopefully we've improved things. So connect the antenna up to the alpha card. And we'll do a quick scan for our test router. I can already see it's at 78 percent move it around a little bit should get it slightly better so big improvement over the cheap Chinese bi quad that was in there if we can 
get it higher. There you go, 100%. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, uh, as always, give it a thumbs up and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one.